It is June 20. My listener Tommy from London sent me a whole packet of questions about the war in general and my life in that war in particular. I would like to remind you that you can write your questions to me at fightingforukraine at gmail.com. Well, for now, I'll try to answer Tommy's questions. I warn you right away. I have already answered a significant number of these questions in the past, but it won't hurt to repeat them. So Tommy asks if the war will end after the liberation of all the occupied territories. I'm sure not. As I said earlier, Russian consciousness is now built around the destruction of Ukraine. This is an absolute irrational thing, some sick fantasy of Putin, which he was able to impose on society with the help of the state apparatus and propaganda. This is not the first time in history, and the history also tells us that the best development of events will be a stunning defeat of the Russians, as well as the fastest entry of Ukraine under the umbrella of NATO immediately after this defeat. The Russians are so afraid of NATO that they won't think of attacking Ukraine again. Tommy also asks how to prevent mutual hatred after the war. In my opinion, hatred should stay with us. We must remember what the Russians did to us. We must understand what kind of people our neighbors are. This hatred should be a safeguard against rapprochement with Russia. It should remind us that we cannot trust the Russians, that we will definitely betray this trust, and we will do this in the most insidious way possible. The war will not be frozen like so many wars in the past, because now there are at least a million men and women in Ukraine with combat experience and a desire to end the war only on Ukraine's terms. Moreover, the vast majority of Ukrainians do not agree to any concessions to the aggressor, only absolute victory. The nation is united and focused on victory, even if this victory will take years of fighting. There are also a number of questions about music, that's because Tommy is a musician. For example, he asks me what music I listen to in the war. The same one I listen to in civilian life. First of all, blues and blues rock. Muddy Waters, B.B. King, Hendrix, Allman Brothers Band, Otis Rush. I admit that it hurt me a lot to see my once favorite Chicago blues man, Lurie Bell, did not support Ukraine with a single word. He was in our country. He was greeted as a living legend. He personally told me after the gig in Kyiv that he had never met such a warm reception as in Ukraine almost anywhere in the world. And after all this, he never found the courage to write even a few words in support of Ukraine on social networks. To me, it's just disgusting. Tommy also sent me his song and wants my opinion on it. I hope my producer Stevie will add a link to this song in the description of this episode. Tommy, this is obviously a very cool thing. I've always been envious of people who can write music or poetry or both. Thank you for sharing this song with me and thank you for your questions.